Hi guys, it's Lisa Unger, um, and I'm here with another episode, for lack of a better word, of Three Good Things, where I talk to some of my favorite authors and my friends about um, things that they are turning to in this crazy time that we're all sharing, uh, favorite things, good things, three good things, um, favorite book, favorite television or movie, and a favorite comfort recipe. And today I'm here with the amazing Mary Kubica. Um, her latest book, The Other Misses, is an absolute must read. It is an instant New York Times bestseller. Um, totally gripping, involving, just a really excellent thriller. Uh, if you have not checked out her work, this is a perfect place to start. And Mary, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I love your, I love your rainbow bookshelves. That was um, like some time when I was supposed to be working on book revisions right. and I was, I was finding anything to do to procrastinate. So it seemed like a really appropriate time to color coordinate my bookshelves. <laughs> oh yeah, excellent idea. I, I, I will refer to that as uh, productive procrastination when you literally do anything else other than what it is that you need to be doing in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I know. <laughs> it is nice hard work. Know. <laughs> it, you know what I mean we took and my son helped me we took all the books down you know put them in piles by color um it is nice though now whenever I receive a new book you know I know right where it belongs I don't have to I don't have to wonder that is that's a great idea yeah I am definitely inspired by that i the next time I need to uh revise my book I will also color coordinate my shelves <laughs> we won't tell Erica <laughs> don't tell Erica <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Um, <laughs> so speaking of bookshelves, you know, I, I, I've said this a couple of times, if, if everybody's been tuning in to um, watch these videos, I've said a couple of times now how blessed I feel to be a reader and a writer in this time. Um, I think that, you know, most of us have been writing um, or, and or reading since childhood and it's where we all fall in love with story, right? Within the pages of somebody else's book. So we all still have that kind of reader joy, at least I do, you know, like that moment when you open a book and you're like, oh my God, it's gonna be so great. And uh, so I really, um, I'm really grateful to, to have that. And as a writer, you know, writing for me has always been an escape hatch. Like it's the place where I go to, you know, sort of create um, a world which may not, may or may not be better than the one <laughs> <laughs> so is there something for you, something that you're reading right now that really just is kind of transported you or something that you return to again and again when you're looking for comfort? Yeah, you know, I have to say, this is one of my favorite books um, by Julie Buxbaum, Tell Me Three Things, which is ironic. Oh my gosh! Things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, did, I did not plan that in advance. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is a book I've, I've read it a couple times, and it's it's YA. But you definitely don't need to be a you know a young adult or a teenager to read and love this book. It's um, it's one of those you know we all need a happy ending from time to time. And admittedly, most of what I read is similar to what I write. It's like dark thrillers, right? Um, but this is one that it it has a lot of emotion in it. Just. Quickly, it's about a, a teenage girl. Her mother has, has recently died, and then her father remarries, and she and her father leave their Chicago home and move to California and move in with um, the father's new wife and um, her teenage son. And so it's about this girl, Jessie, just kind of getting acclimated in a new high school and trying to make friends, which, of course, is so difficult as a teenager. Um, and there's a lot of grief from her mother's death still that she's processing. Um, so there's, there's a lot of emotion in there, but shortly after she arrives at this new school, she starts getting anonymous emails, just signed SN, um, and she kind of befriends this, this individual that is emailing her and, and just starts to build this like cyber friendship, which is really warm and wonderful. And she realizes that she has this person kind of on her side, even though she doesn't know who it is. And so there's a mystery embedded in this, but it's just a wonderful story of friendship and kind of overcoming some obstacles and finding your place in the world. And it's one of those books that like I literally as an adult wanted to jump up and down at the end of oh. it. <laughs> the perfect, most satisfying ending. So 
I highly recommend, I highly recommend all of Julie Buxbaum's books, but this one in particular, if you just need that warm, wonderful story that, you know, you will be grinning from ear to ear at the end of, I recommend this one. Oh, that's great. And also that, you know, I started a, um, a teen book group for my daughter and some of her friends during this time um, so that we can, you know, all be doing something kind of together and we meet together every Thursday on Zoom um, at five and discuss books. So I think that that sounds like a perfect next choice for oh. our, our little book group. Absolutely. I would highly recommend it. You'll have to tell me what Ocean thinks of it because I, I, I just adore it. Oh, good. Yeah, I will definitely, I will definitely loop back about that. Well, can you hold it up again? What was the? Yes. Again? And it has waffles on the front. So. Tell me if you think, oh, well, then how could it be bad? <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess, that's going to be your, is that your recipe? Waffles or no? <laughs> yeah, it actually is not. <laughs> it, it should be. I know I'm like, we, well, I, I won't jump ahead. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right stay tuned for mary's recipe okay so, <laughs> so coming so obviously we're all like sort of you know story junkies right we're always you know i mean most of us are we love movies and plays and television shows as well and you know we kind of consume our stories in many different forms is there anything that you're watching right now um that is really just kind of blowing your mind or is there something that you like i'm i'm kind of like a kid and that i will rewatch things over and over again when i need like a certain mood or like i just want to see like a certain character again so is there anything that you do that way that you return to again and again or just something right now that's just been you know very transporting for you yeah you know we've been doing um you know there are there are obviously so many negatives to um the whole quarantine that's going on right now and the coronavirus, but I feel like a positive that's come out of it is sort of like that forced family time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and my kids are 12 and 14, so they're at an age where, given the choice, they don't really want to hang out with mom and dad so much anymore. So we've been doing a lot of movie nights in the evenings, though, and it's just nice to be able, you know, usually things are so busy. We're not home in the evening. Somebody's running off somewhere, right. um, but now we're all home. We're all together and it's been great. You know, we make some popcorn and we sit in front of the TV and watch a movie. We've been doing it a good number of nights a week. Um, so we, we've seen a lot of really good ones. Um, we watched all of the Hunger Games, which was, was pretty awesome. Oh, I love that. that. Great. We watched Such Arrival. Fun which I also loved. Um, um, but I think my favorite of the movies that we watched is 1917, which is a, a new World War I movie. I don't know if, if you've seen it. We have not seen um, it yet. It's, you know, and I, I wasn't, it's rated R, and I wasn't sure, you know, just exactly. It, it's, it's gory, you know? I mean, there are moments that I wasn't sure, is this too much for, for my kids? But it is, it's a beautiful story. The cinematography is just really amazing. Um, but it's about two British World War II soldiers that are on a mission basically to get a message um, across enemy territory. And it's, it's sort of a race against time. And, um, you know, I just was on, on the edge of my seat. Of course, there's, there's a lot of violence, you know, that's to be expected, but it is just such an emotional story. So I, I highly recommend that one. Oh, great. Yeah, that's definitely been on our to watch list. So we'll move it, move it to the top. Yeah, because yeah. we're doing that a lot too, of course. I mean, we watch a lot of, we watch a lot of, um, you know, um, kind of a whole gamut. We run the whole gamut from, you know, sort of rewatching episodes of The Office, right. which is like one of our favorite. Ocean I and that. I, we get into other things that my husband doesn't really like so much, like Teen Wolf. We've been watching Okay. <laughs> it's, like real, it's like an older I, I didn't realize but I guess now I I noticed that it's an it's like an older series like it started back in 2011 okay and um and it's you know it's a uh, it, it's it's very teen oriented let's put it that way <laughs> yeah, and, and hence the title teen wolf so we've been watching that we like you know want wind up watching things like the flash and you know green arrow and like things like that um so that but we watch you know pretty much you know every movie that comes out at some point so we've been looking right. forward to 1917 yeah yeah i think you'll love it we actually um you know we watch a number of tv shows too which are sometimes just great you know you just want like a 30 minute show to pop yeah. on and pass some time we watched our first episode of nailed it yesterday which i i had heard of i hadn't watched it yet um but it's, it was sort of all over the internet 
for the last little bit, so I had to try it. And um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a cooking show, except or a baking show, I should say. Oh, but, yeah, we love those. Oh, they're not good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um you're you're almost disappointed when you know they do a good job <laughs> um, but it, the episode we watched last night was hilarious oh that's funny that makes great. me feel yeah. better about my own baking abilities <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of baking abilities you know most of us are like sort of turning to you know we're doing a lot more cooking probably than ever before the three of us really do enjoy cooking jeff does most of the cooking but we but we all enjoy it and i have of course you know like sort of my go-to comfort recipe is like you know roast chicken and chicken chicken noodle soup and also you know i come from a big italian family so i usually default to like italian cooking when i need comfort mm -hmm. Is there something that you've been cooking a lot of or something that you kind of, your family is just like, oh, make this mom, you know, like we need this kind of vibe, this comfort for tonight or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not a great cook. I'll admit that. Um, and I have two picky kids, so it's hard. Yeah. Plus I'm a vegetarian. I will, I will cook meat for my family, but it's, it's hard to find something that everybody can agree on, which is right. why we came down to the waffles, which is something that Lisa and I were talking about <laughs> on, on Twitter was um, a pumpkin waffle recipe that is a favorite dinner. Oh, that's right. It's a, we do it for dinner. <laughs> but, um, but so I love to bake. I, so I feel like that's usually my outlet and it's, it's, it's great comfort food. And I think that's something that we can all agree on. But um, I have a banana bread recipe that I'm always going back to again and again. Bananas are thankfully one of the things that always seem to be plentiful when we go to the grocery store. So, um, so I'm able to stack up on bananas and then inevitably we have those last couple, you know, that, that go brown pretty fast or faster than we can eat them. So I'll, I'll throw those in a banana bread and it's, it's one of, I, we don't eat that for dinner, but, <laughs> but it's one of you, you're allowed if you want to eat banana bread for dinner. <laughs> we can all agree on <laughs> awesome that's great but yeah I, we're a big fan we're big banana bread fans around here too sometimes i feel like we only buy bananas so that they will go brown <laughs> yeah yeah those are the best kinds <laughs> yeah they have to be kind of they have to be kind of gooey so we're always you know that's that's a big favorite here too so that's um I think baking too is always so um, just a it's just a comforting activity, mm -hmm. you know. And kids of all ages can can do it. You know, I think people don't realize, you know, like people who don't cook that much or just not into cooking, like they don't realize how easy certain things are. Right. And that it's such a great activity for a kid because you know it's a little bit of science you know, and then it's a little bit of patience, you know, because you have to kind of wait for the thing to be done. And then there's this, you know, really great reward at the end where there's this thing that you made that is also delicious. So it's a, it, baking is a great activity for kids. You know, it's something I've been doing with Ocean since she was like a little, a little peanut. So yeah, yes, yeah, I completely yeah. agree. It's a wonderful thing to get the whole family involved in. And you know, you're right. If you can follow the directions, it's, it's not that complicated. Yeah, and it is a little bit of a science experiment. I mean, you can kind of see how, you know, heat changes this, you know, this kind of liquidy thing into this solid thing that you cut with a knife, you know, and that's kind of an interesting element to it that, you know, I don't know if a lot of people think about or talk about, especially now when we're all like sort of, you know, if you have little ones, you you've all of a sudden been asked to like, kind of homeschool your kids well you know now you have a science experiment <laughs> right right and it's it's real life it's practical you know yeah. I think it's, it's a great task do you remember like when we are are you old enough to remember like a home economics class did you have yeah. that when you were in you, school? you know my son well I'm, I'm obviously he's not in school now but he was taking it it's an elective at their middle school they call it facts now yeah um, home and but facts or it's I should know what that stands for. It's oh, FACS, okay. and now I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> but um, but yes, yeah, so they, they sewed the first the first part of the quarter, and then they were just starting to get into baking when all of this happened. Yeah, I feel like that's something that you know I have not seen in. Although you know the Montessori program has a lot of home based, like when the kids are little, they have like a lot of home based sort of sections to the classroom. And, you know, they learn, you know, they learn really simple things, like when they're tiny, like pouring 
water from a glass pitcher into a glass mm -hmm. into a glass you know like not like the kind of plastic things and stuff so there's a lot of that but I miss that kind of you know I think that there's such a valuable skill like sewing and you know just basic cooking and measurements and you know taking care of a house and shopping and doing all that stuff i think that it's something that is you know it's a real it's a real sort of lost art like the art mm -hmm. of homemaking i completely um, agree yeah so i would like to see more of that if we ever if, if we ever go back <laughs> <laughs> to school, which we, I'm sure we are very soon, hopefully. Right. <laughs> um, Mary, thank you for sharing these really great things. Um, I, um, I will post, if you send me your recipe, I'll post it right in the comments. That's what I've been doing on Facebook. So I will just stick it right in there and then everybody, nobody has to go look it up on, uh, although of course we all could look it up, but you, you know, it will be Mary's banana bread recipe. So we'll put it in, <laughs> put it in there and um, hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy these recommendations. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Mary, for visiting with me. Um, and, you know, I hope you enjoy these three good things. Stay safe, be well, and stay tuned for more episodes of our fun little chats. Bye. Bye.